like a Chef Gordon Ramsay fillet or a William Shakespeare play. I can hear you all headbanging as if you're listening to some mid-90s Green Day. So put your hands together for a legendary human being and friend. Last name, Ray. First name, Stevie. Mr. Stevie Ray, welcome, my friend, to this match tonight. What is going on, Mr. Avi Klein, brother? The professor is in the house, man. I appreciate the intro. Buster, if you could somehow manipulate time once in your lifetime by going back in time and spending one full day with a friend or a family member, who would you choose to spend that day with and why? I would go back and uh, spend the day with my brother. We would spend the whole day together, really. You know, wake up in the morning, have breakfast, then go out, do our chores and come back and just to have a moment to reflect and just talk about him being in, you know, his, his our boxing experience. It would, it would just be a um, great day because Artie was a tremendous athlete and a tremendous person. And I really miss him a lot. We spent a lot of time together. Artie was a, a very exciting fighter. He was like, you know, he was a talented athlete. We were really close. We both admire my, we both admire our father as well. Would you say that it's as inspirational and as rewarding and as thrilling to help the youth of America the way that you do today as it ever was beating an Iron Mike Tyson? Most definitely. I can see the impact that my father would work as, a, as being a child growing up in Columbus, Ohio, coming up through the Parks and Rec Center of the city of Columbus. There were children back then that looked up to my father and how much of an impact he had on their lives. You know, I lost my mother at 71 years old uh, of cancer. Uh, that was nine years ago. And I, I think we all understand that when you lose a loved one, you always sit back and kind of wonder, you know, what, what could you have done more? Which, what could you have done better? So if I had another day where I knew I could spend with her and I could say my proper goodbyes, because she passed away, Avi, when I was taking a nap, getting ready to coach a game. Dog, my sister tried to call me and I always turned my phone off on game day to just get ready. A wife now came up to the room and was like, April's trying to call you. And as soon as she said that, you know, I knew my mom was sick because I was spending as much time as I could with her at that particular time. And as soon as she said that, I just went into a, you know, no, 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 this, this can't happen. You know, this can't happen. I called my sister and she said, yeah, mom passed. Coached that night, uh, came back home and got ready for practice the next day. And then the word kind of got out, <clears throat> continue to work. But that was hard. Some of the rules that she said to me, you know, one was always to treat people the way you want them to treat you. You know, that was that was one of the first rules she told me. When I when I signed up, I remember taking her to dinner. And at dinner, uh, you know, this was probably halfway through the season at that time, my rookie year, and I was starting to play a lot and I was playing well. And we go to dinner together, and I just wanted to take her. And, you know, there's people that are coming up to us at the dinner table asking for autographs. And I was kind of like, you know what, right now I'm trying, you know, spending time with my mom. And I said, yeah, it is kind of cool. She said, yeah, but it's more important to be, you know. No, she said it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And, and those two things that she told me, those two sort of, I always call them Dorothyisms, uh, those lessons that she told me, I think, it is exactly what you know logo was talking about it, it, it's kept me grounded it's kept me humble uh, i have a picture of my mom in what i call my uh cognac room which is all my my, my liquor and all that good stuff uh, and i see it every morning and every night and i say good morning and i say good night to my mom every every day so i speak to her every day but man guys and gals and pals a young man named marshall brady and his family sent him a letter mm. when marshall was three years old in the hospital in remission Byron went to visit him. He fell in love with the family, and he decided right there and then, we have to do something for kids, and you did. You did, my friend. We went to the hospital, and we met Marshall and his mom and dad, and we sit down with them for about an hour, and the kid was just a big Laker fan and a big sure. Byron Scott fan. We went to every, you know, every room on that floor to say hello to all the kids with cancer. And when we got in the car, Man, Avi, when we got in the car, it wasn't, it wasn't a, um, a dry, eyes, dry eye in the car. I was just amazed by my dad. My dad was just, and I didn't know at the time that wrestling was fake. So, you know, my dad was my real <laughs> hero. And, uh, and Lord knows it's so funny because 
I got into so many fights in school because, you know, kids would come up to me and the smart ones would tell me like, ah, your dad's just a faker. And, you know, and the one they'd say that I'd get into a brawl man. I'd just like, you know, I'll show you that my dad's for real. <laughs> and, uh, but, but anyway, It's not a day. It's just one morning. I'd like to, I've been living with a guilt. I've been living for a long time with a guilt. And uh, I'm going to share that with you because it's amazing because I think of you, Byron, who, who you talk about people who lose people suddenly. They don't have time to express and how much they meant to them, how much they mentored them and how much my dad, he got uh, water in his lungs and it lasted for a long time. He was bronchitis during his life. He was bronchitis during his life. And, and, and it was like, it, it was a long battle for him to, 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 to just to live. But when I got to the hospital the night before, I, I, I brought a shaving kit and, and, and I shaved my dad. I just put, I just start shaving him. I wanted him to look good for tomorrow morning, you know, and I, and, I, and it was such a, it was a hard, it was, it was a great time, but a hard time. We didn't speak much. I had to come to time for me to say, well, good night, you know, and, and just before I left him, I told him, I said, dad, I said, I'm not going to be there tomorrow. Even if you requested to have the kids around you when they give you that needle or however, however they do it, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be there that tomorrow because I can't take it. I, I, I just, and, and, I, and I, I guess I was selfish and, and I, and it's been haunting me ever since five years now the face. And then I'm thinking now today that when my dad was taking his last breaths and he had his four other kids there with him and he was looking around, he, he probably missed me. Like, you know, he probably missed that I was there. And I think I'd like to get the, excuse my language, but to get the, 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 the balls and the nerves to, to just go and face what his is, death. Byron, what is something you do differently than anyone else that you know? And why do you do it whenever you're ready to go good, sir? I, I got to get a real good workout in every good morning because that gets my day going. It gets me that. But see, look at Jock, man. Look at those guns. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it gets my day going. I, I think the one thing that I do that's different from a lot of people, and like I said, because of being an athlete, is I work out every day, you know, at least four or five days a week. I want to get in the gym, get that workout in, because, again, like I said, it really gets me moving. It gets me in a positive, uh, positive feeling. I'm ready to do whatever it is that's that's on my on schedule for the rest of the day. My wife will call me and she said, I get off work at this time, you know, let's go do this. I have the energy. Steve Jobs was worth a lot of money. But when your health starts going down, you know, down the drain, there's not enough money in the world that can save you. So I'm just real big into just going to the gym every day, at least four to five times a week, like I said, and keeping my body in somewhat good condition so I can continue to function at a high level for my grandkids and I have a 12 and 10 year old that live here in LA that I see often. But that's the one thing I'll be that I do that I will not trade for anything right now. I'm gonna say I teach. I teach differently. Yeah. I'm a teacher in life, uh, only in my older years because you know, uh, I was thinking of that today, you know, I was thinking um, how the teachers today, you know, I, I was, it's so funny because I talked about that to my girlfriend today, about the teachers today that are 20 years old, 25 years old, and you have teachers in schools, but, but teachers should not start before they're 40 and 45 years old because, because the best teaching you could give in life is, is experience. I, I had empathy when the guy told me, well, Jacques, you want me to climb up the top rope? But what if, what if I don't fall in the right spot? Or what if I, what if I break my neck or what if I, and I tell him, I said, I understand. I understand the fear that you're feeling. The thing, what I do differently is, I'm going to say I teach with empathy. I, I, I try to put myself in their shoes. I, I, and most of the time, now I'm 65 years old, so I've been there. Is when you look at the people come up to you and, and they feel like you, they understand, that, that you understand them. And they have that connection with you. They look at you and they say, I, I really feel, Jacques, that you're, you're saying the truth. Like, you know, you're telling me how you feel because that's how I feel. And I think that's the greatest thing that, that I'm doing today is uh, that is different. I teach with empathy. That's what it's all about. Guys and gals and pals, officially give it up, please. JW, if you can as well, let's give it up. For Jacques Rougeau and Byron Scott, who are moving on to round number three, the TKN Celebrity Tournament. They both will be in round three of the TKN Celebrity Tournament. Jacques, with his...